Well, it says I'm live. Who knows if that's true? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Packers Daily. I'm Aaron Nagler with Cheesehead TV outside Ray Nitschke Field for practice number four, set to kick off here in about an hour and a half. Uh, day three was yesterday, first day with the pads. Some ups, some downs, some good, some bad, everything to be expected. Definitely the defense carried the day, as we talked about yesterday. Three interceptions of Aaron Rodgers, which probably should have been four. Defense left the field singing their praises, yelling out D-Train. It was good times. Camera's going to be a little shaky today, guys. It's very windy and overcast here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Hope you're all doing well. Hello to everybody in the comments section. Is the secondary hype for real, Josh? It is till it isn't, right? Official Armani. Hey, Nagler. Hey, how you doing? I mean, the secondary's got talent. There's zero question about that. And when you look at Chandon Sullivan's play so far in camp, and then you add in Josh Jackson, who so far, I mean, we're only three days in, but so far, to me, is a bit of a surprise as, as the quality of play we've seen from him. You start thinking, okay, they could round into shape, definitely. But it is only three days in. It's only one day with pads. Things are very, very, very early yet. So we'll see how it plays out. But, yeah, the early returns are good and promising. We are clearly better with Raven Green as he moved back. Um, they are better with Raven Green. There's no doubt about it. He has been playing a bit of that third safety role again, much as he was last year. Is there a potential trade value for Tim Boyle if all goes well? Frank, eventually. Not this year, though. No way on God's green earth will they trade him this year. Uh, I do think if he uh, lights it up in preseason next year, it could be a Matt Hasselbeck kind of thing. Maybe not a first rounder, but a uh, Matt Hasselbeck type of trade there. Do you, did you see Grassi's video about us not having a wide receiver problem now, but we will next year? Thought-provoking. Grassi made a thought-provoking video? I'm kidding. I'm ki I jest. I jest. I kid. I kid because I love. No, I did not see it, but I'll have to check it out. Um, thanks for the super chat, Dakota. Packers have a lot of pass catchers on the team that aren't wide receivers. Will Rodgers take more checkdowns this year? That is a very good question. And that, to me, is the real answer to a wide receiver dilemma on the horizon is it's not about wide receivers. It's about eligible receivers of which the Packers have a plethora and I foresee they will for quite some time. Um, as far as your question, Dakota, will he take more checkdowns? You know, it's Aaron Rodgers. He's not going to change his stripes. He's not going to suddenly change his game. I will say I tend to think there are going to be a lot more plays designed for backs, tight ends, etc in the passing game, and that is going to be up to Rodgers to execute. We saw a couple things with Tyler Irvin yesterday that got me really excited. One in particular, a pass out to the left flank where he came in motion behind Rodgers, and then Alan Lazard shoots off the line of scrimmage to start blocking, and you get the ball in space with Tyler Irvin. I'm talking the excitement right there. Uh, thanks for that super chat. So many people. Good morning, everybody. Jamal Williams hype train. Big B's here. That's right. Uh, Mr. JJ, hey, Aaron, seeing you outside Nitschke Field makes me think of the 20 years I went to camp before this year. Thank you for being there. I'll get my camp fixed through you. Trying to live uh, trying to live that life so you guys can be here vicariously. That is part of what we do here at Cheesehead TV. It's what we did last summer. We're going to be doing it this summer as much as I can, although this year I am a one-man band. Um, we're going to do it every year we can. Um, I know how tough it is. When I found out that I could get in credentialed for training camp practice, there was no question in my mind that I would make this trip specifically for that reason. Uh, we want to be here for you guys, Packers fans, worldwide. Repping the Cheesehead TV merch again. I am indeed. I got the uh, 60 squad up. Check out uh, our Teespring store for all the latest. I'm really excited for A.J. Dillon. Uh, Haroon, you and everybody else on the old uh, interwebs. Josh, thanks for the super chat. I've always wondered if Rodgers' avoidance of the middle of the field the last several years has to do with Finley's injury. I don't think it's Finley's injury in particular, but I do think there is some credence to, and I've talked to guys who have played with him, about his not wanting to lead guys into injury. He doesn't throw medicine balls. You've seen that throughout his career. Um, I don't doubt for a second that Finley's injury certainly feeds that kind of mentality, but I don't think every time he goes back to pass, he thinks, I don't need another Jermichael Finley. Uh, but I do, like I said, think there is something to that. I think I missed a super chat. Let me make sure. No, there's Dakota. Okay, and then I got that one, I think. 
Yeah. Oh, nuclear family. Thanks for the super chat. What happens if a team drafts a player who doesn't agree to a contract and the team doesn't want to trade him? How long does the team hold his rights? Uh, well, through the year, uh, they've got to sit out the entirety of the season and uh, pretty much go through the entire thing the following year. It's uh, a cluster fudge. Although that may, you know what, that may have changed in the new CBA. I can't remember exactly. How's EQ looking? Oh, good. He got uh, some action yesterday. He had an end around that kind of got snuffed out by Adrian Amos. But for the most part, he looks solid. Uh, no spectacular plays yet, but I don't think that was expected. But he, the most important part is, is he looks healthy. And uh, he's definitely got some burst in those legs. Now he's just a shout out to say thank you for sincerely all your efforts. Thank you. Thanks for checking it out. The footwork drill comparing all three QBs is telling on where love needs to get to. Spencer, absolutely. And again, as I asked Matt after the practice, that is completely to be expected. Uh, not only is he swimming as far as the mental side of the game, but physically, the fundamentals, it's all going to take time, especially since he has zero work on the field in the offseason. Avajara, thank you so much for the super chat. Did you stop by the can pancake place while you're there? I have not. Uh, I, I'm pretty limited in the amount of time I have to stop by places, unfortunately. I'm just busy with producing content all day and night from the moment I wake up to the moment I go home. Hey, Nagler, is Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones going to be the starter? Yes. Uh, make sure I didn't miss anything. Super chat wise. All right. 49ers need interior offensive linemen help. Any chance we talk to the trade with one of our rivals? Yeah, I don't doubt that, um, you know, if they made a call, maybe the Packers shopped somebody closer to the beginning of the season. I don't think those calls will get made right now, but it's certainly something that's going to be on their radar. I don't doubt for a second that Brian Gutekunst would take the call from John Lynch. Frank, thanks for the super chat. Notice lately QB12 has been setting his feet less and less and throws off his back foot more, more often even when it isn't necessary. Why is that, you think? It's a bad habit. <clears throat> it's a bad habit he's had for the last three or four years. Uh, it's been brought up to him every time we try to even broach the subject in the media. He just points to his uh, fundamental awards that he won back in high school, I think. So it is clearly just a bad habit that is never going to be broke now that he is an older player. Mary Beth, been hearing a lot about Amos on the defense. Sounds like he is having a great camp so far. Very solid, 100%. No question about it. He uh, has been all over the field, not just in the box where you would traditionally probably expect him to be, but he's been in center field. Uh, he had a fantastic diving interception yesterday on the first throw at team. Uh, yeah, he looks good, ready to roll. Great to gonna, It's going to be great to have him in the second year in this system. No question about it. Maureen, is there an actual battle for QB2? I mean, no, not really. This is most likely going to be a redshirt year for God. It's so windy. Most likely going to be a redshirt year for Jordan Love, and I'm pretty sure the Packers expected that once the uh, pandemic became a real going concern, and they knew they were never going to get him on the field in the off season. The way Tim Boyle has looked, I would be absolutely shocked if uh, it goes any other way than Tim Boyle as quarterback number two. Nathan, thanks for the super chat. I hope next year Leroy Butler is being honored at halftime for having made the Hall of Fame. Love to see him Lambo leap into a sea of vaccinated Packer fans. By the way, vaccinated Packer fans is the name of my next solo album. Check it out. But yes, I am with you in that desire. That is an awesome image. 400 carries for Dylan? Uh, in the next three years, maybe? 400 carries for Dylan. Get out of here with that nonsense. Australia checking in. What's up? Hello from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Tell your folks I said hi. Oz, I will. Is that a uh, Charlie Barron's nod? Tell your folks I says hi. Uh, do you think the Packers should sign Jared Valdir? I mean, I thought they should this offseason. I do not doubt for a moment that he is on their emergency contact list. He has not retired. He is still out there. And we saw what he could do in a pinch last year when Bulaga was unavailable. So <clears throat> I think they're going to be okay at right tackle. You do worry about left tackle. And Valdir has played some left tackle. I know Billy Turner talked yesterday about playing left tackle, but I'd much rather have Valdir. So I got to think he's on their call list, no doubt about it. Jared, thanks so much again for the super chat. I've heard the A.J. Dillon hype, but is it real in camp? Sorry if you talked about this already. I mean, yeah, 
people are excited about him. I don't think there's any question about it. Um, you, he had a great run yesterday in team, but you know, it's really still um, taking everything with a grain of salt at this point. No real contact yet. It hasn't been like really physical or thumping. Obviously, it's not going to be at any time soon in camp. Um, they're not going to be doing any tackling. But, yeah, so far so good. I, I, I'm cautiously optimistic, no doubt about it. R.R. Smith, 30. How's my guy Raven been looking? Keep up the good work, by the way, green and gold, baby. That's what I like to hear. Thanks so much for the super chat. He's looked solid. Uh, I don't think that you'd say he's, like, flashed at all, but certainly looks like he's picking up where he left off, which is good. Brian Balaga, Iowa. Has Tremont played his last game in a Packers uniform? Ugh. Why you got to bring us down, man? Sadly, I probably think that is the case unless there are some injuries and he remains unsigned. I do think the Packers would give him a call if uh, a bunch of corners went down. But other than that, outside of that, I believe, yes, that is probably the case. Are we talking to Antonio Brown or any other receivers in free agency? No. Uh, they literally just signed two wide receivers, by the way. <laughs> What's the deal with Rodney? Man, we both started Packer blogs at the same time. She's at TV, grew, his didn't. He's an old, bitter boomer. Plus, I called him out once for stealing content from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. A nuclear family, thanks for the super chat. Am I wrong to think that Tyler Irvin is the player who makes Aaron Jones replaceable? Jones is better, but wouldn't Dylan take away Jamal's snaps? A lot going on there, Nuclear. Um, I don't think it's so much that Tyler Irvin makes Jones replaceable. He augments the backfield. He augments the offense. Drafting Dylan is certainly hedging and or giving leverage in case Jones prices himself out of Green Bay. But I don't think it's ever as delineated as that. I think they would love to be able to utilize everybody. I do think Dylan being drafted means a lot more uh, in regards to Jamal Williams' future in Green Bay than it does Aaron Jones or Tyler Irvin. Um I don't think Irvin can be close to the every down presence or featured guy that Aaron Jones is. Uh, I do think, like I've said, he can be a real versatile chess piece, but I think asking him to take Jones's role would be a bit much. Nathan, thanks for the super chat. What commentator would describe Dylan Thighs best? Collinsworth, Sims, Aikman, by the way, who's doing Monday Night Football these days? You know what? I know they just announced the Monday Night Football booth. All I know is that Lewis Riddick is going to be there, and I'm really excited about that. I think it's it's going to be excellent with him in there instead of Booger. Uh, outside of that, I'm not quite sure. But as far as who would describe Dylan's thighs the best, Chris Sims literally just did a whole bit on his podcast about him. So go check that out. Brian, thanks for the super chat. Favorite Packers training camp fight of all time? I don't know if I could rank them, but I it's got to involve Gray Rugemer. That's all I know. Who, funnily enough, is now like the old what Rob Davis used to be as far as like the player liaison transition guy here for the Packers. I saw him yesterday, actually. Uh, John Madden. Obviously, John Madden would be the best to describe Dylan's thighs, but he's not commentating anymore. God, how great would that be, though? He'd get all telestrating on him. That would be phenomenal. Uh, don't want to be negative, but Billy Turner sometimes lapses and pad levels scare me at guard sometimes. Let me tell you, you haven't lived through being nervous about Billy Turner until you've seen him pass protect at tackle. Dustin, thanks for the super chat. With Vitaly opting out for the year, hire him as a Cheese Ed TV reporter and have a thigh measure off between him and AJ Dillon. Dustin, this is one of the best ideas I've ever heard. Jason, thanks for the super chat. Morning, Nags, over under $250 spend by you in the pro shop before you head back to New York City. Oh, Dustin, I, or Jason, sorry. I'm going to tell you right now, there is a black hoodie with a silver G on it that the coaching staff and personnel people are wearing. I am a billion percent getting that. Holy cow, it is fucking awesome. There is zero question I am I am not leaving the greater confines of Wisconsin until I own that. Wait, where'd your super chat go? Got to take it off the screen. Oh my god. So many super chats, guys. I'm drowning in super chats. Brandon, thanks for the super chat. The writing was on the wall for Aaron Jones, the second Packers drafted Dylan insert changed my mind made. No. Sorry, buddy. That is not the case. Um, it certainly – okay, did you think that the writing was on the wall for David Bakhtiari when they jumped up to get Jason Spriggs? Because a lot of people did. That certainly didn't turn out to be the case. I know there are different positions, and I know 
You don't want to pay running backs, et cetera. But they've made it very clear, both reporting around the combine and lately. And Aaron told us right here on Cheesehead TV that they've been talking. They're going to get a deal done. I, I think Aaron Jones is sticking around, buddy. No doubt about it. Dasis Was, thanks for the super chat. Always nice to get hyped listening to Packers stuff after a tough work day. Get love to transplants. Finland says, go Pack, go. <laughs> Michael Rodney sucked. Man, leave Michael alone. Let the boomers be bitter and old. It's all good, man. But thank you. Thank you for the support. And, you know, transplants will be back at some point as uh, soon as Banky comes up for air. But it means a lot. Support worldwide. Thanks so much. Uh... It's the writing on the wall for Jamal, not Aaron. Very much agree. If they re-sign Jones, are you okay with Goot taking AJ in the second round pick? 100%. I like good football players. I know the internet and these fantasy GMs and the PFF guys are all like, oh, you took a running back too early. But if he's prime Eddie Lacy, sign me up. I'm all in. He's probably going to be better than prime Lacy. A, you got to let it play out. B, if he's good, who gives a shit? Honestly. I cheer for the Packers. He's a Green Bay Packer. I'm rooting for him. It's that simple. It truly is that simple. Uh, it uh, got time for one or two more, guys. Let's see what we got. Any news on Kadar? Uh, no news is good news, I think. He hasn't... Uh, Hasn't stood out in a bad way. He hasn't jumped out at all, but he's having a solid start to camp, I would say. Whoa. <laughs> Nuclear family. Thanks for the super chat. Best NFL podcast. I like you, Sims, and Around the NFL. Well, the Around the NFL guys are my boys. I love them. Um, that's probably one of the best um, kind of overviews of the NFL that is out there. I would su I would highly suggest listening to the guys at uh, Football Guys, uh, Sigmund, those guys do a great job. I and mean, it's a fantasy podcast, but they are phenomenal. And the other one I, I really take stock in is Evan Silva. Anything he's ever on. His own podcast there at uh, Establish the Run, but any appearance he does, make sure you check it out. That guy is that guy comes with the goods. Riley Angel, thanks for the super chat. Which third-year player takes the biggest jump? Third-year player. I'll tell you what, after three days of practice, I'm thinking Josh Jackson. But it is still very early. But uh, right here on August 19th, mark me down for Josh. All right, guys, I got to go. Thank you so much for all the support, all the super chats. We really mean a lot. Uh, I can't tell you guys what it means to me that you guys hang out with us each and every day here at Cheesehead TV. Uh, please do me a favor. Hit like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Cheesehead TV is devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide, including Patreon members. We got our Zoom happy hour tonight, 6 p.m. Central Time. If you're a Patreon member, the information is there on the Patreon page. If you're not a Patreon member, please consider giving us $5 a month to support everything we do, including sending me to here to Green Bay, sit outside Nitschke Field, chat with you fine folks. That doesn't just happen. It takes uh, a lot. So every bit of support helps. But even if you can't jump on board Patreon, hit like. Hit subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Cheesehead TV. We are devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. I'll see you after practice. Go Pack Go.